If you've ever had Sichuan food or spicy hot pot, you've definitely encountered this spice. They're called Sichuan peppercorns, and they're native to China. And they're what makes the cuisine so mouth-numbingly spicy. And the effect can be, well, electric. It's starting to spread all over my mouth. One study shows the tingling sensation has the same frequency as some power grids. But I noticed growing up in Los Angeles that the peppercorns in the States weren't really that strong. So I had to go to Sichuan to get the real deal. We are on our way to Hanyun, the epicenter of peppercorn production in China. Um, for the Americans out there, Hanyun is to peppercorns as Napa is to wine. It is said that the best peppercorns in the world come from here. But whether or not that's actually true, well, we'll find out. I met up with Zun Cao, a peppercorn distributor and processor. He took me to Qingxi, a town in Hanyun that allegedly has the best peppercorns in the country. Sweetanyin年就开始，皇帝就开始吃到这个花椒好，然后他就点名要请一些花椒，每年都给他税购嘛。他这里的花椒它可力不是那么大，可是它的香味还有麻味都特别浓。我们这边花椒的话，从每年
Oh, he assured me that they heat them for an hour. So, you know, that's clearly not good for the oil content. Uh, and so therefore the potency, the flavor, the aroma, the fragrance, you know, um, not ideal. Today, people don't have to do that anymore, but few know about this regulation change. But the latest footnote, it said, if Sichuan peppercorns come into the country, just inspect and release. In other words, no longer was it necessary to have heat treatment or their certificate. But no one knew this. I mean, there was no announcement. There was no press release. As a result, most peppercorns in the States are still heat treated, which dilutes their potency. We're still heat treating and overheat treating some of them. And, you know, when I try to con share this good news, they were they were not convinced. <laughs> I think the biggest problem is that, you know, there's demand for the best Sichuan pepper within China. And then, you know, the importers who bring over giant amounts of it here for the supermarkets, they really, they bring over the least expensive. It's been the lowest quality, full of seeds and twigs. And When it comes to peppercorns, most Americans don't get the best. So to experience the real deal, you might have to come to China. There are many ways to use peppercorns. They generally come in two types, green and red. The green have more floral notes and they're often paired with fish or used as a garnish. Red peppercorns are more common and they're usually roasted before they're used. Here it's sprinkled on as a powder, here it's being used in hot pot and cooked whole in stir fry. They can even be made into oil. In some parts of Sichuan, the leaves of the peppercorn tree are deep fried and eaten as well. Oh. It's like tempura in terms of texture, but then you get that numbing <laughs> right afterwards. But where does that numbing sensation come from? There's multiple analogs in Sichuan peppercorn, um, but the main one is hydroxy alpha sanchul. The chemical produces a similar effect to anesthetics used in surgery. Like any spice, it uh, loses its potency after a while, especially when you expose it to things like the air and like heat. And obviously when it's first harvested in, in August, it's the most potent. When it's in the freezer, it, you can uh, make it extend a lot longer. It seems like a lot of work for a little spice, but there's something about the peppercorn buzz that keeps people coming back. Um, yeah, I think so when we're sort of experiencing the peppercorn, it's not just one compound, but it's really the synergy of all of these different phytochemicals coming together. There's so much variation in sort of that flavor that we're getting and that um, physiological sensation. I think it's sort of a wonderful plant to explore and get to know better.